I'm senior biotech analyst John Vandermosten with the CEO of Vivas, John Amos. We're going to talk about uh, weight loss drugs today and a lot of other topics uh, and, uh, related to the company. So, John, we just had a, a brief intro here talking about uh, Qsimia mm -hmm. and, and some of the things it can do. Um, why don't you tell us about how, you know, you've, you've mentioned that, that uh, you've actually seen some pretty strong sales. And, and as we know, weight loss drugs have really been coming into focus this year. Right. Um, why don't you give us a little background on kind of how we got to where we are right now? Well, so if you go back... I always like to tell this story. It's kind of a joke, right? But it's actually a pretty serious story. Um, on the Titanic, uh, there was a pastry chef, and uh -huh. he invented the donut. And when he, after he survived the Titanic episode, and he opened a donut shop in New York. And at that moment in time, what we saw in America was this very concentrated amount of caloric unit of food. And that kicked off where we are now with an obesity epidemic basically on a global basis. Right. Is that donut just started to replicate itself into a wide variety of foods. And so human beings from an obesity perspective, a lot of people think it's bad habits or bad decisions, and it's really not. It ties back to our evolutionary biology. So a couple hundred thousand years ago, food was very scarce. Now food is widely available. And our bodies, our DNA, if you will, never updated itself to deal with this mass food availability. And so we see this around the globe. We see it in the Middle East. We see it in Europe. We see it in Mexico and South America. We see it in China. Uh, we see it in South Korea and obviously here in the, in yeah, the United as, States. As, as people become more, I guess, Western or they, they change exactly. their diet away from traditional diets, they're, they're getting a lot more calories. Yeah. And, and, and so... What Qsimia does, our drug does, is it comes along and helps kind of update a person's software, if you will, mm. and it helps okay. them manage their um, their cravings in a more effective manner. It helps them manage their dietary and food impulses in a much better manner than they have. Um, a great example is we ran a, a clinical study, or an investigator-sponsored study, excuse me, um, at Wake Forest, and we compared patients who um, they had placebo, bariatric surgery, and then placebo. And then our, they were on our drug, bariatric surgery, and then our drug again. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that these patients had about a 60 BMI. So they were okay. you know, really suffering from morbid obesity. And what we found is with our drug, we had about a 10 BMI difference between patients after a two-year period of time. And really what it was, and, what we, and as we've talked to bariatric surgeons who utilize our drug, what we find is that people have to retrain themselves. They've been eating mm -hmm. 10 to 14,000 mm -hmm. calories per day. And so our drug helps train them and retrain a person. It's a software to update. Eat. It's a software update. <laughs> and, you know, and we're in a world of you know, mass technology. And so that's, been, that's probably more like one of the most gratifying things that we saw about our, mm -hmm. our pharmaceutical. And then if you look at the market right now, the market has really expanded from an awareness perspective. Yeah, exactly, with the GLP-1 agonist, right? Right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, when Elon Musk you know, texts <laughs> right. about something like that, which he <laughs> went on Ozempic, it's fairly well known. Wow. You know, it's a pr pretty amazing thing for the category from that, from that perspective. And so, um, but what it's done is that it's it's opened a lot of people's eyes. And then the, the pandemic obviously came along mm -hmm. too. And COVID, uh, people with high obesity rates had a, had a higher morbidity rates, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so people have become more aware of their health on a global basis. So QSEMI has been approved um, in the United States. It's approved in South Korea. It's approved in the Nordic countries, Poland. Um, and then we filed probably another... 20 or so countries around the globe are in process. Okay. So Middle so East, UAE. It's a global product. Yeah, and our goal is to make the product available to a billion plus people, um, you know, by the end of 2025. Okay, that's a pretty, pretty um, big, big goal. Um, so, you know, one of the things that's emerged recently with the uh, the GLP-1 agonists is that uh, they're they're high priced and they may have some side effects that probably, that may not have been caught in some of the initial initial studies. And, but the one thing I wanted to focus on most is just the the cost of them. I, I, I've seen stats saying from 800 to $1,000 per month and some insurance companies are saying that they're not going to cover it. So it really places places a pretty big burden. I mean, not for Elon Musk, but uh, for others, it, it places a pretty 
pretty big burden on them to, uh, you know, to afford that. Now you have a different model. Vivas has a different model with Qsimia. Why don't you tell us about that and how um, it really makes Qsimia a, a, a kind of a better way to go if, if you, you know, if you, if you don't have insurance coverage. Yeah. For, so, so for the most part, about 30% of the lives in the United States have some obesity drug coverage and we kind of fit in there. So about 38% of our patients have some level okay. of insurance coverage, but that leaves 62% yeah, that don't. The majority. Right. right. And so what we did is we created a, a model that's a direct patient model. So a physician will you know, ha sit down, have a consult with you, and they'll decide on a proper course of therapy. Mm -hmm. And once they go through that course of therapy, they'll go ahead and write a prescription and it goes into a, um, we run it through a, a platform that we call QSIMIA Engage. And what it does is we track the patient. Um, there's some safety things that people need to understand about our drug, particularly for pregnant women. And so once they understand that and they accept, you know, from a medical safety perspective, they accept that risk, then we go ahead and, and ship them that drug. And we do that for about $112 a month. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen and what's important for people for patients is that you can be durable to therapy. So one, the, sa the, the drug has to be safe mm -hmm. for a you know, multiple year period of time. And we've been on the market for 11 years and we have patients who've been on the drug seven, eight, nine years. And we know that we have patients through our direct to patient program, the QCMA Engage program that have been on the drug for five years. Okay. And so they, they, it allows them to you know, not rebound because that's one of the problems when people have these issues, they come off these drugs, right. and then, right. then the weight comes back. Yeah, yeah, their software becomes unupdated, <laughs> right? And they, they revert, revert to back. an earlier version. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so that's that's been an important uh, thing for us. And then when we, you know, we're taking the drug obviously across the planet as we discussed, and we're going to continue to maintain this very significant price advantage mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. around the globe. And the reason why is we think, I think it, that. Obesity is, you know, probably it's a slow burning pandemic, but there are, you know, basically people, if you look at their life expectancy, if they're morbidly obese, yeah, their life expectancy lower. is much lower. So, so what, you know, as, as we talk about, you know, weight problems becoming mm -hmm. more global rather than just focused on Western countries, right. uh, what is the size of the population you're exposed to? Because I think, I think you had mentioned to me that, that your, your IP is rolling off in, in a couple of years in the United States, yeah. but there's a pretty big opportunity in other regions. So how, how big is that opportunity? Yeah. So, so we, we talk about, we use the, you know, the, the punchline, a billion people. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's about 450 million of those billion people okay. have are obese or okay. would be eligible to take our drug. Okay. Um, yeah, we lose our exclusivity, unfortunately here in the United States, um, at the end of 2024 and it rolls off over about, that period of time. Our patents on a global basis are anywhere from 2032 to 2034. Okay. So, so you know, so we're really, years, yeah. yeah. So we're really looking at, you know, some of these overseas markets, but we're not going to price it like a branded, you know, traditional branded pharmaceutical. We're really trying to create um, a marketplace for patients that if they want to uh, be, you know, and come under therapy for, for weight loss, that they have an opportunity to it. So wherever they are, whether they're in the UK, which we filed for submission, not approved um, yet, but hopefully we'll hear some positive news there. Um, and then in the Middle East, the Middle East over the last 10, 15 years, their obesity rates have really mm. accelerated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and so for us to be able to put ourselves into uh, the Middle East population and help those folks, that's really important to us. Yeah. And then we also, you know, we have a pediatric indication all the way down to 12 year olds. Okay. So there's about 14.4 million kids in the United States. Oh, wow. So that's a pretty big number. And changing the eating habits and the behaviors at an earlier age. I like think those will it, last throughout their yeah, entire that's, life. That's so the it could have a longer term impact. Yeah, much more durable. Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, thank you, John. Yeah, really appreciate, you. It. appreciate it. We had the uh, CEO of uh, Vivas LLC with us in the studio, uh, John Amos.